Hello and welcome back to the NUFC Opinion Blog for another fan feature interview. Today I'm joined by someone I know very well, Kevin Curran. Kevin, how are you? I'm very well, Dan. Thanks for asking. And you? I'm absolutely fine. Doing all right. Firstly, as we speak, Newcastle sit two points above the relegation zone. Things this season have been pretty awful for, for quite a while now. What issues do you see and why do you think we're in this position? I think I think the issues are there for for everybody to see. It's you know, for me, it's as, as plain as the nose on your face. The manager we appointed to replace Rafa was a a substandard championship manager at best, and I think he's well. It, it, we are where we are because of him, mm. because I I actually think the squad is better than it was under Rafa. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, but I think for me now the position we're in. It's a tough call. I think it's really going to be nip and tuck as to whether we stay up. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent convinced either way. Mm. I think this weekend's results will be quite important. Well, that's what I'm about to come on to with the next question, which is: We take on Brighton on Saturday, which is it's a massive game considering the circumstances. How would you see it going? Um, technically, very defensively. I, th- <laughs> I think the problem we've got is that Bruce doesn't know how to to set the team up to attack teams and actually go on the front foot, which I think is a pity because I think we've got players there who would thrive playing those kind of tactics. And I think now is the chance to, to get, to drop some of the players who've just been treading water for me. Mm. And I think maybe give the likes of young Elliot Anderson a chance. Um, and, you know, in the last couple of games, he's put Andy Carroll on for 30 seconds and three minutes, respectively. And that's just a joke. I mean, you know, you've got a guy there who's itching. He's probably had his longest period of being fit yeah, for that I can time. remember. Mm-hmm. And he sat, sat on the bench for, you know, most of the season. Mm-hmm. So I think it's time for, for some changes at the yeah. beginning. If we do go down, if the, if the worst happens... What what then? What next? Again, it's all ifs and buts, isn't it? Again, it depends. You know, are we going to have the same owner when we go down? The likelihood is yes. Um, would we be as a, an attractive proposition for a potential buy in the championship? No. So the, the price for the club would have to be uh, reduced drastically for anyone to be interested. Yeah. And I think the the big the sixty four thousand dollar question is, you know. Can we bounce back up at the third time of asking? Mm. And I fear not. That, that's exactly my opinion. Yeah, I, I often fear that it wouldn't happen again. Mm. But, you know, at the minute, I'm just, I think probably like a lot of people, I'm just so disenchanted to the point where, you know, I don't even want to look at the results and the games. And it's, it's just so frustrating, isn't it? it? It's heartbreaking to watch what has become of the club after. Mm. You know, such such good times in the past. For, like just to, to round off this little section of the interview, if you had to put a prediction, will we go down or will we stay up? I would say we will stay up. It's nice just, to hear. Just I yeah. think we would, but I really do hope that it doesn't come down to the final game of the season. That's mm. all I would say. Yeah, yeah. Because if it's a case of one of us go down that day, it'll be us. So yeah. I think we need to have our our fate sealed before, before the final yeah. day yeah no i agree moving on to some of your memories of newcastle united of course you've, you've, you've supported them for such a long time now can do you have an earliest memory that you can remember i do but I, the, the problem is i can't remember the year because um my um mom's cousin took me to the game no you know normally it's it's your dad that takes you to your first yeah. ever newcastle game um and I'd been to a couple of reserve games with my granddad because on a Saturday afternoon, you could just walk over to St. James's, which we did because they lived in the bottom end of Gateshead, Salt Meadows. We'd walk over the bridge to the town and watch a few reserve games. But then me, uh, me mom's cousin, Lawrence, he took me to, it was Everton at home. And, I, and I'm not sure if it was 71 or 72. So I was six or seven. Yeah. I do I do recall it was a draw, and I think it was nil-nil or one-one, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Mm. And he sat me outside on a bollard outside the strawberry for about an hour before 
we went into the game so he could have a few pints with his mates. Fair enough. Bear in mind at the time I was probably only seven years old. Yeah, sign of the times, isn't it? Um, do you have any players that you idolised growing up? I think I oh. could probably guess a couple. Well, my all-time favourite is Super Mac. You know, mm-hmm. the guy from the day he signed for the club, um, he was just a complete different character to to anyone that'd been there before. I mean, he was 21 year old, I think, when we signed him. And he rolls into St. James's Park in a Bentley with a big fur coat on. You know, like, it's just, you know, that was before the, the, the Asprilla days. And yeah, Super Mac just had a charisma store. about him. And, you know, if you can make your home debut in front of, I don't know what the capacity was then at St. James's, but, you know, maybe 30 or 40 or 1,000 and score a hat trick against think, Liverpool, you know, a, a decent team at the time, down, you know, man. you're going to go down. In folklore, come up with me after that. But after that, he was just absolutely, you know, superb. Mm, yeah. And still my all-time hero. With that being said, do you have any memories of, of potentially your best matches that you've watched or been to throughout the years? Um, sort of post that, the Supermag era. Just in, in general? You can name, general. A couple, name a few. Um, names. Name well, it wasn't at the game, but I do remember watching it on, on Match of the Day, the... The semi final in seventy four against the two goals, but yeah, the two goals. My dad was there. My dad was there. Yeah, the pass by Terry Hibbert. Terry Hibbert, unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, and then of course there's there's lots of you know memorable more recent times. When I say more recent, you know twenty years ago, uh, as they were in the mid nineties. Yeah, yeah. If you look in the late the the mid to late nineties, we had some great games. Um, and get you know. Not just the games where we won the likes of Barcelona 3-2 or fine order away or Man United at home 5-0. You know, some of my most memorable games are, you know, the Chelsea semi-final mm, in like 2000 when we got beat 2-1. Yeah. And, you know, that was the best I'd seen us play at Wembley. And we really didn't deserve to lose that game. Um, and then there was the two semi-finals at Old Trafford, which were fantastic, mm. especially the Tottenham one. And the goal, you know, the second goal by Shearer with a sublime pass by Silvio Maric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. I think that was the only thing he ever did, passed it sideways. Probably was. Obviously, obviously we, we, we've been through a few memories there. Looking ahead to say the future at Newcastle, we know we don't know what lies ahead at Newcastle, but if you had to say what your hopes were for the future at Newcastle and what changes you'd like to see at the club, what would you, what would you say? Um, well, I think probably like most clubs, I would like to see us invest heavily in the academy and the training facilities mm-hmm. because I think it's it's common knowledge that that poor. Um, our training facilities are just not up to Premier League standard. Mm-hmm. And I think you know we really need to invest heavily and you know maybe start nurturing some of our own kids, the likes of this Elliot Anderson. Mm-hmm. Um, I find it strange that the likes of um, Sean and Matty Longstaff are now suddenly out of favour. You know, I know Sean had a, an injury and he was struggling for form a bit, which is fair to you know, I think all kids go through that stage. But it's like he's just pushed them to one side. And I've got a feeling that's more to do with um, the panic stations that he's in about keeping us up. And maybe he doesn't have the trust in the younger ones, which is mm. probably why Elliot Anderson won't get a chance on Saturday either. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, my feeling is, you know, we need to to invest heavily in the academy and the training ground. And I think, you know, I get fed up probably like most Newcastle supporters of reading in, on social media and in the, the national media that, you know, we, we expect too much and we want, you know, Champions League spot. Every, that's a lot of rubbish. We all know that. Yeah. All we want is to be entertained and, and enjoy, you know, watching our team mm-hmm. perform well and giving 110%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it, as, as we've said, it, it is horrible to see what has become of the club. It's a shell of what it of what it once was. Are, are there any players at the moment who you think are oh, treading water? I think you said that at the start. Mm. Well, I think there's some players who maybe for the last season or two could have been, you know, sold on the likes of Richie. Um, I think he's been a great servant of the club, but again, I think his his best days are past him. And I think maybe, you know, 
it will be time to, to move the likes of him on. Um, Lascelles for me um, mm. is does not is not worthy of being the captain. I think he's a bang average centre half. Yeah, I feel that um, you know for me, Kieran Clark has been a a revelation, probably one of our best centre halves alongside the likes of um, Federico Fernandez. Yes, I, I, look, I mean Fernandez is just outstanding, and if I don't know if we've given him a new contract or offered him a new contract as I'm yet, not, I'm not entirely sure myself on that actually. But, but we certainly should. Mm. And I think, you know, we need we need to look, if we do steal, we need to look at certain positions where we've been weak all season, i.e. right back. You know, um, I think Mankiel has done okay when he's played there, but no more than okay. I think Kraft is... Awful, in my opinion. ...a liability, and teams will deliberately tack us down, down that yeah. flank. Um, I also think the likes of the, um, the, the new guy, the left-back, um, Jamal Lewis. Jamal Lewis. I think he's a bit lightweight. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Dummett is a is a much more uh, robust left back, but I feel he's now feels his position as centre half. So yeah, yeah. We, we need to make some changes throughout you know throughout the, the yeah. whole team. I think up front Wilson was a, a superb signing. Um, obviously he's injured at the minute, but I think when he's fit, we're a different team. So we could really you know do with adding someone to play alongside him. Andy Carroll may, or not, may or not get another contract, but at the end of the day, he's not going to play week in, week out anyway, is he? No, but that's so, it. It's not what he was brought in for. He's... No, but we need an, we definitely need another forward to play alongside Wilson or mm-hmm. to support Wilson, not necessarily yeah. alongside. Just but we need a manager who knows you know, well, how yeah, to play everyone in the right just, positions as well. Yeah, just, just to sum things up, if, if Steve Bruce was sacked tomorrow, who would you want in? Mm. If you could, if you could, I know it's a very hypothetical question, but um, I mean, for I, I never wanted to see Rafa leave in the first place. Yeah. I mean, for me, um, Rafa is m- my favourite manager. I think the job that he did at the club was certainly on a par with um, Kevin Keegan, Bobby Robson, Joe Harvey, and Arthur Cox. I, mean, I would put him in the top five. You know. Mm-hmm. Of, of from what he, from where where we were at a point from where we were and what he what he did to keep us up, you know, to get us back up and then to keep us up, and and working with Ashley in the way that he did because I think you know, I know Rafa was a very good politician, um, but I think he got the fans and he got the club yeah. and he understood you know what it all meant to the fans. Um, okay, some of it might have been for the press and you know for for his own ends, but so what. Having said that, it very rarely works out when someone goes back to a club. So mm-hmm. I don't think I'd like to see Rafa come back. Mm. Uh, which, you know, goes back to your original question, who would I like to see? Yeah. Um, Eddie Howe is a possibility. He's been mentioned um, a lot, yeah. And, you know, maybe, it might be too early for him, but maybe Steven Gerrard. Would he would would Newcastle be able to entice him away from Rangers? I fear not because we'll have Champions League football next season. Mm-hmm. But for the future, mm-hmm. who knows? It's a very good point. I mean, yes, he's certainly done a fantastic job at Rangers. That, that's that's clear to see. Kevin, that that wraps things up. Thank you very much for for speaking to me. I really appreciate yeah. this. More than welcome, Dan. I've got loads more to say, so you can call me back anytime. Oh yes, <laughs> we'll have you. We'll have you back on soon. As I said, there's a few things in the pipeline. And hopefully, that some things you might be wanting get yourself involved in so i'll certainly have you on some point in the near future anyway but for now thank you very much for watching and how are the lads how are the lads